All right, so here we have a 2000 Honda Civic. Uh, this customer's complaint is uh, the car is poorly running. It shuts off on him. He has a hard time restarting it. Uh, d has down on power. Um, so, they so he brings it in. Uh, we've done a little bit of checking already. You know, it's 145,000 miles on this vehicle and it still has the original plug wires. We pulled some plugs out just to take a look. They are, they are um, very worn, the electrode is worn off. Um, so that's really not gonna be his issue. There is no codes uh, in the system. Uh, so it seems like it's running right. The fuel enrichment is trying to increase it by 1%. Uh, the O2 sensors seem to be reading on the high side even though it's trying to, uh, trying to increase the fuel trim. The rear O2 sensor is hardly moving at all. Uh, so we go check the tailpipe. We have hardly any flow coming out the tailpipe. So we've removed the O2 sensors from the manifold, the um, upstream and downstream. The car immediately uh, cleans up its RPM. Uh, it has a better idle quality. We lost our misfire. So um, you know we're kind of going at this as this converter is plugged up. Um, so why is the converter plugged up? That'd be the, that'd be the next question because uh, just a poor running engine is what is going to melt that down. Um, but of course here we are, we have to replace it to be able to get to the next step. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and replace the uh, exhaust manifold with the catalytic converter. Uh, we're going to pull some plugs, do some plugs and wires. Um, just try to, try to bring the car up, try to find out what the, uh, what the concern was there. But putting a manifold up to get it back on par because we believe it's plugged. We hear some rattling, so maybe we'll see some chunks fall out of this. Um, so we'll go ahead and start by removing the manifold. All right, so first we're gonna remove these two bolts uh, so we can remove our, our shield. All right, you can see where I've already removed the O2 sensor was right here. I have already removed the O2 sensor. Uh, so it's not really in our way. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna loosen up our manifold bolts here uh, and then we'll go down and loosen the bottom up. I'm just gonna yeah, just hope, break them all free. All right, so we did have, he does have a little bit of another sound. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two bolts here and that should release this shield. Uh, nope. nope. Let's just leave that alone for right now. We could really put a zip tie around or a, a hose clamp, a worm clamp to try to hold it to keep it from rattling. You can see it's lost its tabs. You know, if we try to, if we try to take that off there, we might have some other issues to deal with. All right, so now we're gonna remove our three bolts on the bottom for our flange, uh, and then that will leave us one more bolt uh, for our mounting. So we'll go ahead and do our triangle flange. And these we're just gonna remove and, and take out. So we're going to go ahead and remove these two bolts here. Uh, there, this is a hanger. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. We have a little bit of rust, as you can see. All right, so now we're going to come back and uh, we're going to remove our manifold bolts.
Okay, so now we will remove our manifold. Maybe. Oh. It's pretty tight in there. That is pretty all gone tight in there. All right, we're gonna take this 10 millimeter off. Right here, this will be our pretty AC line mount. So that was just another tab or bracket. <laughs> all right so here we have our new uh, manifold and catalytic converter this one here is a little redesigned uh, it's a two-piece manifold uh, but all of our basic you know com how it lines up to the flange the same the cylinder head the same this kit also comes uh, with a new intake man or a exhaust manifold gasket and then the gasket for the center. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, remove our heat shield so we can do our bolts. All right, so since we can get to these bolts uh, with our ratchet once it's in, we're going to go ahead and just, uh, and just leave these a little loose in case we need the wiggle room. And then we'll do our final tightening once, uh, once we get it installed. Uh, so we're going to go back to the car now. This kit also comes with uh, studs and nuts uh, to mount to the cylinder head. So we'll go ahead and uh, replace uh, the old ones with the new ones. All right, so we want to remove these studs now. So what we want to do is to remove the stud, we're going to need two of our old nuts. Uh, we want to put one on backwards and then one on uh, forwards. So we tighten them together to lock it, and then we can grab the back bolt or the back nut, and then we can remove that stud. All right, so now we have our old studs out. We're going to go ahead and reinstall our new studs. We should be pretty good at just putting all these in bottomed out uh, by hand. All right, so just to make it a little easier for ourselves, uh, we're going to pick this gasket right here out of, the, out of our lower pipe. All 
All right. Let's go ahead and install our new gasket. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and drop our uh, manifold in. Hopefully it's a lot easier than before. Oh, we did something wrong. The other way, the other way. And so the first bolt I'm going to put in is just for the mount. Right, so we have our new gasket. All right, so now we're going to uh, install our new uh, O2 sensor. So this will be the downstream on the bottom side. So here we are uh, with our new sensor, and we have put some NICs. Uh, it's also supplied. This is a Denso. Uh, this is the OE uh, part for the vehicle. So we are removing a Denso part and putting a brand new Denso part back in. Uh, so we'll go ahead and install our... So once we get a little flush, we do have a special socket. Can you tell me when you see it? So here's a O2 sensor socket. It has a cutout on the side so that we can put it like this. Now we could either use a wrench on there or we can use our ratchet. And then we have our sensor comes back over here and goes back into our into our lock. Looks like we need to do something here. I think. Got a little retaining tab. What we want to do is Let's kind of come around this way. What we want to do is keep it off the exhaust.
So that's so the idea here is we don't want that to blow into the exhaust. We don't want it to sit. So kind of looping it around this AC line here uh, will keep that from happening. And so here we have this shield. This makes a lot of noise down here. Uh, we're never going to be able to reattach those mounts. So what we're going to do is we're going to fasten it up. Uh, we're going to use a worm clamp. You just have to be careful with a worm clamp. You cannot over tighten them. All right, so now that'll take care of our rattle. Now we'll go ahead to the top side and put the other uh, sensor in and tighten up the bolt. All right, so now we're going to tighten our manifold. Uh, we're going to go ahead, we're going to start in the center. And we will work our way out. Now you can see I'm really not, I haven't tightened it too much. All right, so now we have our, uh, we've done our first torque uh, where we kind of split from the center back and forth outward. Uh, now we have our torque wrench and we're set to 23 foot pounds. All right, so now we'll go ahead and do our, our O2 sensor. So here's the upstream uh, Denso. So like we were doing before, these come these come with some uh, anti-C's. So we want to make sure we put it on the threads. Um, this is copper. It, it technically is okay, but we don't want to get any on our on our sensor at all. Uh, we don't want to have any kind of uh, skewed data. Now for this car, the upstream and downstream with this particular motor are the same sensor. Uh, sometimes. Uh, they, well, they call this one an air fuel ratio and they call the other one an O2 sensor. They both somewhat do the same thing. This one is a little bit more refined than the downstream, but in this case, uh, the vehicle has a more refined as the downstream. All right, so this sensor is going to come plug in over here, but we're going to put uh, our shield on first. All right, so there's our bracket back on. And then this one uh, will end up mounting back like this. All right, so this wire, we have a mount we go through. This is kind of to keep it off the manifold. It does have its own clip that slides into down here. So not very, what we're going to do Is we're going to add a little zip tie right here and that shall keep everything 
uh, off the manifold. It does have a heat shield, uh, so if it does, one on the wire and then the actual heat shield. But we'll go ahead and uh, we could do a little zip tie right here to look pretty uh, unnoticeable. All right, so what we have is we have enough room for the engine to torque. It's not going to go very far, and it's nice and fastened in its spot. All right, all right. So that's part of that in installation there for the manifold. Um, so what we're going to also do is we're going to put some plugs in. Uh, plug wires. These plug wires are original, uh, 1999. Uh, so this is. Uh, these are all original. Right. And the reason why we're doing this, we're going to be doing the, the plugs, the air filter, and the fuel filter uh, with the wires. Now, this car had a poor running condition with no codes. Uh, so it wasn't something that could set a code. Uh, fuel pressure, if fuel pressure is low, the vehicle has no way, or at least in this model year, um, uh, it's, not, it's a new concept to measure fuel pressure. Um, so in this vehicle, it doesn't understand when the fuel pressure is dropping because of the dirty uh, fuel filter. It doesn't understand that it needs to up the pressure. It reads the O2 sensors, and that's how it's determining how much fuel. So uh, it's very a uh, crude mapping system. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and fix all those variables um, that the computer can't tell us by, by the outer range from a check engine light. All right, so we'll go ahead and take some of these spark plugs out. We can tell how wide our gap was, how worn uh, the Electro was on both sides there. Uh, this vehicle, it does have a spec um, to check the gap. Uh, it says spark plug gap uh, 1 to 1.1 millimeter. Um, so these are NGK specific for this vehicle. Uh, they did come with a protective uh, cap on them. Unfortunately, we do not have a spark plug gapper to check them. Uh, so I'm just kind of looking at them, make sure they're all the same, uh, and we should be okay. Uh, you can tell, I mean, we're a much tighter gap than what we were. The bigger the gap, the harder it is on the electronics uh, to jump the gap. Uh, Air-fuel ratio is definitely a contributor to that, that gap uh, resistance. Uh, so we should be okay here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and so we put them in hand tight. So right now we're hand tight. So we're going to go, like the box says, a half to two thirds. And that'll do the crush washer, this washer here, that'll, that'll give us. So half is pretty, I'm, I mean, that to me, there we go. So that's a half. So we're tight. I mean, you can t kind of tell on a spark plug, you definitely don't want to be pulling threads for sure. You know, it's aluminum head. There's our half. All right, so now we have our new wires that we got from Auto Parts Direct. You can see they already come with the tabs. Right. Also comes with some boot grease. So just put a little dab. on our boot, that'll just help our plug wire click on a little better. All 
All right, so this was our shortest one. Number one. Okay, so we have our air filter. All right, so now we're going to remove the fuel filter. Uh, so fuel filters, um, the way that I like to do them, the way I prefer to do them, as I have one hard line that needs a line wrench. Uh, so this is a, I think, uh, I have all my tools here already picked out. So we have a 14, we have a 14 millimeter line wrench fitting. Then we have a 19 inch or uh, fitting for the uh, or 19 millimeter for the uh, uh, the base of the fuel filter. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to loosen this one first. Then we have a banjo here, so the same thing, 19 millimeter, and I believe this one's going to be a 17. Uh, so once we break the fuel filter free. Because uh, right now it's held in its mount pretty good. Uh, we have a 10 uh, millimeter from the other side that will loosen and we'll be able to slide it out. So we do have two washers on this one. Uh, we should be provided with our new filter with new uh, crush washer. But we want to save them just to make sure that they are everything is good. You see that one's stuck. They stick. There's a little trick to get it off. Right, so. so we just need to loosen the mount up a little bit more. So here we have our new filter, looks exactly like our old one. Uh, we have our check that we put in here to hold it in. All right, so we'll go ahead and remove our caps uh, and install the filter. So we're going to be like this. I'm going to go ahead and set it in and uh, give a little finger tight here. I like to run like to run all my fittings in before I go to do the tightening just to make sure that everything's good. And so now our kit comes, our fuel filter kit comes with uh, three washers. All right, so these are going to be for to replace these two. Sometimes there's a third one on the top as like a bleed. Uh, that would be that would be that one. So we only need these two. Okay, so what I do is try to arrange my wrenches so that I can squeeze them together so they're in like a V and I can squeeze them together and that's what's going to give me my, my tight. 
So if I take that one and I spin it back around. All right. Now we'll do the top. So I would put these two together and squeeze them together. All right. All right, so what we'll do is we'll prime the engine. Looks like we came out of our mounts a little bit. Oh, wow. Looks like we popped that. We're going to have to reset that up. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and cycle the key a couple times. We're going to cycle the key a couple times uh, to build fuel pressure, uh, to kind of prime the system. Uh, and, then, and then we'll be able to start it. All right, so I'm just going to cycle the key a couple times. Okay, so I cycled the key about five times. Uh, each time the pump uh, primes for about 10 seconds. So we should be getting fuel up here. We're not seeing anything. Now we're gonna go ahead and start the engine up now. All right. I just wanna make sure for our fuel, that's our... All right, so wow, we can already tell we're running pretty good compared to what we came in. Uh, I did not have any rev. The engine was so clogged uh, on the converter. Now this converter was probably clogged from oil uh, and blow by that this engine is just so old. It has oiled out the converter and plugged it up with carbon uh, and, and just uh, hardened oil. Uh, so we're gonna take it for a test drive and uh, we should be good to go.